Here we go. The NFL season is upon us. 2022 kicking off tonight. We've got the Buffalo Bills and the Los Angeles Rams. We will preview that Thursday night football game, plus our six-pack of our favorite games in week one. Let's get after it on today's Peacock and Williamson. NFL analyst Brian Peacock and former NFL scout Matt Williamson bring you expert NFL analysis every day in less than 30 minutes. Get an inside look into the NFL on the field and in the front office. With elite breakdowns, next level analysis, and in-depth information only for the real NFL fans. This is Peacock and Williamson, and it starts now. Welcome to the Peacock and Williamson NFL show. Brian Peacock and Matt Williamson with you as always at BB Peacock at Williamson NFL on Twitter. Get those Twitter Tuesday questions in for next week. And uh, we are excited to start breaking down these games for week one. The season is finally upon us. We'll finish up in the final segment here with the with the Thursday night football game. But uh, a six pack of our favorite games as we do here. Bring it back to the, the Peacock and Williamson six pack <laughs> from uh, seasons seasons gone by, and um, I mean, I just can't wait for it. I, I'm excited. Oh man, so, so much happens in the NFL during the off season, and we do a show every day. And there's so many different ways that things go through, and there's things that are fictional, things that are fantasy, things that are uh, reality, things that just are bizarre. But now we get to break down actual football games, Matt. The football games are here. I couldn't be more excited, but as you're saying that, I was sitting there thinking, it's amazing that we have so much content from the day the last game is played until this day. I mean, there really is plenty to talk about for a great portion of the calendar year where there's no football. And yeah, you you know why the uh, the Walmart heirs were able to spend so many billions of dollars on a football franchise because the NFL is king. <laughs> right. It's amazing that it produces all year long. I do want to remind folks that this uh, episode today is brought to you by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is daily fantasy made easy. Pick two to five players, and if they score more or less than their Prize Picks projection, you can win up to ten times your money on any entry. First-time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with promo code locked on. That's prizepicks.com, promo code locked on. Okay, Matt, here we go. Let's start with the first of our favorite games this week. And there's a lot of revenge games happening. And I yeah. don't think it's uh, uh you know, I don't think it's a surprise that the NFL scheduled some things this way. And Monday night football is another one that not a lot of people are talking about. But let's start with Sunday and let's start with Baker Mayfield and the and the uh, Carolina Panthers, his new home against the Deshaun Watson less Cleveland Browns yeah and this is an exciting game I'm sure Mayfield's going to be jumping out of his skin for it I think that Matt Rule and you know that whole staff is going to have to kind of keep him contained um they're going to have to keep Miles Garrett contained there's a problem for me I mean that's one of my favorite matchups is, is Ekwanu versus Garrett Rebuild offensive line. Ikwanu was my favorite offensive lineman in this draft, but that's a tough situation. Um, both of these defenses, when you, when you peel back the stats, were much better than people might have realized last year. I think this is a running back centric type of game, and pretty much whoever wins in the trenches plays better D, runs the ball better, ends up winning in the end. And I like the Panthers. I'm a little shocked by this line. They're they're favored by a point at home, but they have the better weapons they have the better quarterback they're at home you know i i just think that they're the better football team right now yeah a point and a point and a half uh as the home team i think you got to give them at least three points at home because i think they match up well when you look all the way across the board and especially when you consider quarterback and the revenge factor here maybe is baker mayfield too amped up for this game does he Who knows, right? push himself into some mistakes but uh, it's not in Cleveland, so I think that maybe would will ease him a little bit there being at home, but having the enemy come to him. Um, and I'm sure he's got a lot going on in his head about all of this. But you mentioned Miles Garrett, and I think it's that Cleveland Browns defense is the reason that I think their floor is a lot higher than a lot of people are giving him credit for. Even without yeah, Deshaun yeah. Watson and having Jacoby Brissett at quarterback, Jacoby Brissett, and I kind of said this about the – the, the Seahawks too, you know, Geno Smith is not an ideal situation for them, but he's an NFL quarterback. Maybe he's not a top 20 quarterback in the league, but high end backup. And I think Jacoby Brissett is the same way. And probably Jacoby Brissett, I'd rather even have than, um, than Geno Smith as my quarterback. And the defense is, is borderline stacked for the Cleveland. It is Brown. good. 
got a good offensive line still. They can run the football. So I think they're going to try to take the ball out of Jacoby Brissett's hands in a lot of games. And I think they can still win a whole bunch of games that way. And if he makes a couple of plays, Amari Cooper in town now, uh, I don't think, I think, I think the Browns are getting faded maybe a little bit harder than they should because I've seen people put them down at the bottom couple of teams in the AFC, and I just I don't think it's possible with, with their defense. You're talking Clowney and Miles Garrett. and I really like their secondary. Yeah, and the secondary. You've got yeah. Denzel Ward. He just got paid. And Greg Newsome, I think, was a fantastic draft pick. Jeremiah awusu Cormo, I think, could be a star linebacker in this league. So they've, they've got weapons on both sides of the ball. They do. They have a very good roster, especially, obviously, when Watson's in play. I, I do think the biggest weakness on the team when they're right is D-tackle, but the rest of those starting nine, I think, are loaded, and they can make up for a D-tackle deficiency. Um, I don't love their weapons, though. I mean, I think J.C. Horn will do a lot of battle with Amari. The other receivers are unproven. One of my favorite, <laughs> I keep bringing him up, My one of my favorite fantasy guys, though, is David Njoku. I, I mean, I, I think Njoku is going to catch a lot of balls in this game, in this, maybe in this game, but I mean, this season, Brissett loves throwing to the tight ends, and they paid him a lot of money. Yeah, the Njoku thing is, is sort of like the post-post hype sleeper with mm -hmm. Njoku, and he got paid, and he's staying there. It was a little bit surprising, and now he might be the number two weapon in the passing game, you know, maybe after Hunt and, and uh, Amari Cooper there, so... All that said about the Browns, though, I do think the revenge factor, and I do think the Carolina Panthers at home can still win this football game. I would have probably picked the Browns this week to be a surprise winner, and I might pick the Browns more often than than some folks do uh, this season as a as a as a winner because I don't think their lines are going to be quite right. But in this one, gotta go Panthers definitely over. You know, uh, I, I'll go Panthers by by at least three, and, and maybe maybe Panthers by a lot. Yeah, I, I don't have any problems. Looking at all the lines this week, Carolina is one of my favorite bets. I mean, week one at home, I mean, I think they're in a good spot here. Let's move on to the second game in our six-pack. Crack open there. Nice. Uh, we got your Pittsburgh Steelers at the Cincinnati Bengals. And I know this one's close to home for you as someone who covers the Steelers as closely as you are. You are holed up in Pennsylvania there. And uh, the Cincinnati Bengals, though, are a team to be reckoned with in the NFL. And they got better than last year. And Oh, yeah, they were already in the Super Bowl last year. Yeah, they're, they're a very formidable team. Um, I've been telling Steeler fans, this is the time to play them. All new offensive line. None of their prominent guys, especially on offense, played any preseason snaps. Like all their starters, except the left guard, didn't play. So, I mean, I, the Bengals are the better team, but I do think it's a good time to get them, throw a lot at them, and see if the, the communication and all those things hold up. I like the new Bengals line. I don't think it's phenomenal, though. And I still think they're at a disadvantage against Watt and Hayward and Ogan Joby, who came over from the Bengals in that group. But the Steelers are clearly at a disadvantage in terms of Chase and Higgins versus their secondary and all those things. Um, the Bengals ran all over the Steelers last you know, last two times these teams played. I expect their run defense to be better. Um, and we'll see. I mean, Steelers O-line to me is my biggest concern as a Steeler guy, and that's going to be the case every week. And I'm excited to see what Trubisky looks like in a you know a true setting like this. I'm going to pick the Bengals to win, but not cover. Bengals favored by six and a half. And um, that the question I have about the Bengals, the reason I don't like the line is, do, do they start just a little bit slow out of the gate? Burrow missing yeah. most of the beginning of camp and, and preseason. So do they start a little bit slow? I like the Bengals a lot. Six and a half is a big line. I, it is. I, I'm still going to go Bengals by a touchdown here, though, because I, okay. I want to see what okay. this looks like for the Steelers because I'm just really not sure. Yeah, I mean, they've won three in a row. They've been the better team of late. But there is somewhat of a big brother, you know, Steelers feel to them. And same when they play the Browns. I think they keep it close. You know, I mean, Tomlin as a dog usually covers. We got four more games yeah. in the week one six pack. Then we'll talk Thursday night football as well. Might have a bonus game. Maybe find a little, a little cold one in the back of the fridge for a seventh game. <laughs> six pack just because we're so excited for week one if we got time to get into some more games uh, coming up here on peacock and williamson but i want to let the folks know about our newest sponsor turo turo is the world's largest car sharing marketplace with turo you can book any car you want wherever you want from a community of local hosts 
Browse a huge selection of vehicles for just about any occasion or budget across the U.S., Canada, or the U.K. And uh, I, I love this service, and I've used it before, and uh, I've been a guest, and folks that have the hosts that have their cars, it's awesome if you need some wheels, and uh, we're a one-car family, try to ride my bike a lot. Sometimes we need a couple of cars and don't want to buy a new car right now in this market, so use the use the Turo to go get yourself a ride, and you don't have to book a uh, you know a a rental car for you know multiple days you can go to turo and book a spacious suv or a minivan if you need that family road trip or get a classic or luxury car for a special event birthday or holiday maybe just a quick ride you need to find an economy car to get you from point a to point b on a budget test drive that new electric vehicle you've had your eye on before you purchase it maybe i think i'm going to be doing a lot of that finding what kind of car i actually am going to be buying at some point soon many turo hosts can even deliver the car right to you every trip is backed by liability insurance terms and conditions and exclusions do apply ditch those boring rental cars and find your drive at turo.com thanks again everybody for making peacock and williamson your first listen Every day here on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day is what we do. Check out the ultimate preview. Make sure you check out your local team's podcast because they are covered here, no matter the sport of the Locked On Podcast Network. Okay, let's keep going through week one, and uh, here's a good one. Patriots at Dolphins, and if you listen to this podcast, you know a couple of days ago, I actually picked the Dolphins to make the wild card in the AFC and not the New England Patriots. And I hate that Patriots roster, Matt. So is it time for the Dolphins to start beating up on the Patriots for once in the last 20 years? I think so. I mean, I, I hate, I have a lot of respect for beat reporters, but I hate relying on them for my information. But all of them are so overwhelmingly bad about this Patriot offense. And we've talked at the death with the coordinators. And again, I don't think they're super talented. So I think the Patriots are in a bad spot right now. And kind of like you were talking about with the Browns, I feel like they need to win this game at the lines of scrimmage, defense, special teams, win the turnover battle, maybe confuse Tua here and there. But I think the Dolphins are just a noticeably better team. One of my favorite things year after year is betting on Miami at home in week one. You know, just the heat and the, the I mean, that's a brutal first game for me about as bad as you can get as well as going to Denver I mean it's just hard to play 60 minutes in those conditions I wish this game wasn't three and a half but I'm still gonna lay the points I was gonna say that that half a point because I like the Dolphins but I like them by three you know right. I, I think the Patriots are gonna play a ton of those games this year where they win or lose by three points and, and I've got them losing this one by three but the three the half a point the three and a half might make me go against the spread and not bet against Bill Belichick but you're right the Dolphins have been practicing in South Florida you know all summer long the Patriots right. have been in the the Northeast so um will that be a factor here and I just want to see and especially if the if the Patriots do and you know, Bill Belichick's had so many weeks here to prepare for the Dolphins, but it's a new look Dolphins team. Does he know exactly what to prepare for? I think that might tough, right? benefit the Dolphins more so than maybe some other week one opponents, potentially for the Patriots, where Bill could have a lot more time to prepare. But it, maybe the Patriots, it takes a while to figure out what they're doing on offense with their coordinator situation. So I think it's the right time for the Dolphins to jump out to a 1-0 record in the 2022 season. I and mean, Belichick teams have struggled in Miami. And... Man, Tyreek is dynamic. They've got so much speed on that they offense do. with Waddle, and I can't wait to see how that comes together in a battle of the ex Alabama quarterbacks. We we're going to see a lot in, that. in this division. With yeah, man. and I think the, the Dolphins' offensive line is noticeably better too. Right, and these have a better roster top to bottom. No doubt. I don't even think it's close. But uh, as uh, <laughs> which is one of the funniest stats out there. Speaking of the Dolphins, I think it's Don Shula is the only the only head coach in NFL history, and he did this multiple times back in the mid nineties before he retired, that it, there was a bigger disparity in wins and losses in, in basically in total wins between two head coaches, because obviously Mike McDaniel, new coach has zero oh, wins. Wow. Bill Belichick has however many hundreds of wins under his belt. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, only Don Shula has, uh, has had more than, than, um, than Bill Belichick here in this matchup more than his opponent. That's pretty crazy. I hadn't thought of that, but uh, if I'm the new guy, I'm like, Hey, give me a chance. I mean, <laughs> just wait what I'll do, man. Right. I'm going to light the world on fire. When you look at it that way, you think, Oh man, he has no chance, but then, you know, there's some unfamiliarity for Bill too. So oh, I think they're a hard team to prepare for right now. Yeah. 
Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, how about the team that does not have Tyreek Hill anymore? The Kansas City Chiefs. What do you expect from Mahomes in his first game, spreading it around to some other wide receivers without Tyreek? They are at the Arizona Cardinals in week one. I think they might blow them out. I mean, I think I know there's a high over under here. I think the Chiefs are going to score a lot of points. I'm really worried about the Cardinals defense. I don't know where the pass rush comes. I mean, the worst idea in the world is to blitz Mahomes, and I feel like the Cardinals are going to have to be a blitz-heavy team to get home. That's bad. Um, I think the, the Chiefs will run the ball reasonably well. I, I kind of feel like this is a statement game for Kansas City. They're going to come out and say, we'll be just fine with Tyreek, put up 40, win this game by two touchdowns. I like the Chiefs by a lot, too, and Patrick Mahomes said it's going to be a different player every week. That doesn't mean that Tyreek Hill's not going to be replaced. It's just going to be right. different, right? And um, spread it around. I, that the Cardinals defense is the thing that worries me here. So this this has, and I think there's less shootouts usually in Week One, and teams are kind of feeling each other out. And there's always some funkiness to Week One too, and maybe some upsets you don't expect. I think it was was it the Jaguars a couple of years ago that. Uh, they won in week one and then didn't win a game the rest of the year and had the number one pick yeah, in the draft. Yeah, uh, you, yeah. you know, those types of things happen, but this has the vibe on paper of a, of a shootout type of a game here, because I think the chiefs will go up and then the Cardinals with Kyler Murray are going to have to just throw, 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 and, and we'll see what that ends up looking like in this game. But I do like the chiefs by, by a bit here. I think I had the, the total at you know, 30, 21, something like that. Yeah. I feel like I'm, I'm selling the Cardinals offense a little short though. I mean, I think they can move the ball pretty well. No Hopkins. Ertz is questionable. It sounds like Rondell Moore and Marquise Brown will kind of carry the load, which is fine. You know, they, they, I like their weapons. Kyler is very dangerous. So I think this will be a fun one. Start all your fantasy guys, that type yeah, of deal. Absolutely. Yeah. KC by six on the road. You like the home dog. If you are bullish on the Cardinals, take them, but I'm not. I'm going to take the Chiefs. I'll, yeah, I'm going to lay the points there, too. The Raiders at Chargers. Here we go. AFC West is going to be so much fun. And I have the similar vibe here with uh, sort of a, a shootout mode for how this game's going to go. I like the Chargers. I like the Chargers to go up early. I like the Chargers to win big. I like the Chargers to put up a lot of points. Can the Raiders fire back? And we've had some pushback because we've been kind of down on the Raiders, Matt. And, uh, you know, a lot of fans were, were upset with us because we didn't pick them to to win their division or make the playoffs in our predict predictions episode we had them maybe under the over under win totals for the season and for the Raiders you know we talk a lot about the offensive line and that's what there was some pushback from a, a listener recently on Twitter that was uh, chirping at us and look the the line is one thing but I'm probably even more worried about their back seven and when you look at a team like the Chargers yeah. Herbert and you're going against Mahomes and you're going against Russell Wilson now in the West and those AFC West teams have a tough schedule. I don't think the Raiders back seven is up to the challenge. And I think they're going to get torched at times, even though they might be able to pull off a pass rush. So if the, if the pass rush doesn't get home, look out. And so uh, that's why I like the chargers being in this one. I do too. I mean, as you kind of mentioned, those top three receivers, including Palmer are really, really good for the chargers and they have a great quarterback, but I also think Austin Eckler will beat up on these linebackers. Gerald Everett's another one of my sleeper favorite tight end guys that I think is a, a better contributor than people realize. Um, I, it will be difficult to get Jones and Crosby blocked. That's why I mentioned the underneath targets, maybe a lot more quick hitters, higher pace stuff. Um, and on the other side, I really think getting Mac and Bosa blocked is going to prove to be very difficult. One of the biggest keys, though, I do think favors the Raiders is JC Jackson's not going to play. And with Devontae Adams in the game like this, this is exactly why you went out to get Jackson. So you're going to have to overcome that. I, I still like the Chargers, and I'm going to lay the points. Would you guess there's as many Raider fans, though, in this game as there are Chargers? You know, they travel saying, well, right? It's a home game for the Chargers, but the, and, and we've seen this a lot with, with L.A., and there's a lot of transplants in L.A. anyway. So, you know, teams like the Raiders, teams like the 49ers really travel well Great at those L.A. Bases, home yeah. games. So it might not be that much of a home field advantage, but I think three points is not quite enough for me here. So, yeah, I will lay those three points, and I'll take the home team Chargers. Me too. I'm pretty happy about it, too. I think this could be another one with a, a fair amount of points, though. Absolutely. It's going to be fun in week one. Uh, how about yeah, the yeah. Packers and Vikings? We're just going to stay with these divisional matchups here, yeah. this time in the NFC North. How do you see this Green Bay Packers at Minnesota Vikings game in week one? I think this one might be a little closer to the vest. You know, I think if you're Green Bay, the plan is let's lean on this defense. It's just loaded with talent. Try to get a running game going. You're getting guys like Bakhtiari back, which I think is huge. 
Um, I'm excited to watch Jari Alexander against Justin Jefferson. There's a lot of good matchups in this one. Let Rodgers figure out who his favorite target's going to be. Maybe play it a little slower in terms of pace. Um, but I think Minnesota will compete in a big way. I have this game like 21-20, maybe something like that. I mean, I think it's going to be tight. I agree with you. I think both of these teams are going to come out of the blocks a little bit slow with the Packers trying to figure out, similar to how we talked about with the uh, with the Chiefs, you know, spraying the ball around. Who's going to become that weapon? Alan Lazard, where uh, Aaron Rodgers is hilarious, talking about going from one MVP to another, right? Is that how he put it? Uh, or one Hall of Famer to another, or something like that, with his receivers, talking about Alan Lazard. Alan Lazard might not play in this game either. So, right, right. He dubs the rookie. Is it going to be Sammy Watkins, which is a sneaky fantasy play? Um, in, in Green Bay, but yeah, I think low scoring can Justin Jefferson rip off some big plays. Can the Vikings hit some big plays on offense? Otherwise, I still got to take the Packers. It's only one and a half uh, points. I know they're on the road. If you like the Vikings, think they can score on that Packers defense, then maybe you want to take the home dog there, but I am not going to. I like the Packers at least by three and maybe a low scoring game, maybe even something like, you know, 17, 14, something like that. Yeah, and I, 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 when I said it 21-20, I didn't realize that the spread was one. I'm looking at one. You said one and a half. I think I'll still take the Packers, but this is probably more of a stay-away game for me. I, I'd probably lean towards the under if I had to put money on something here. A little extra cold one in the All back right. of the fridge. Let's, let's do the seventh game of our six-pack here next, and then we'll talk Thursday night football, and we'll talk Buccaneers at Cowboys. I've got a really good note here on the Bucks when it as it pertains to quarterback Tom Brady and uh, where he ranks in history, not in the NFL, not with the Patriots, but with the Buccaneers already. We'll get to that next. Thanks again everybody for making the Peacock and Williamson show on the Locked On Podcast Network, your first listen every day. Now for your second listen, go check out the Ultimate Pro Football Preview 2022 an eight episode extravaganza to get you ready for the NFL season. The local team experts on the Locked On Podcast Network, myself included, Matt Williamson involved there, plus a betting angle from Lee Sterling of Locked On Bets, all combining into one ultimate NFL preview. Search for Ultimate Pro Football Preview 2022 on your Odyssey app, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcast. How about the Buccaneers at the Dallas Cowboys. This is good Sunday nighter, man. Yeah. Matchup Sunday night. I've got a quick note here. This uh, doesn't really pertain to the game, but uh, this blew me away. Tom Brady, his third season with the Buccaneers, he needs 39 touchdown passes to be the team's all time career leader in touchdown passes. That's Tom like hard Brady to believe. Needs, it is unbelievable, right? And I know there's been some really bad teams for a long time in Tampa, uh, especially through, you know, the some really lean years. But, Didn't have uh, a okay. use for Steve Young, you know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They couldn't figure right. anything out with Steve Young until he became a Hall of Famer somewhere else. You know, they did win a Super Bowl, though. But, that was, you know, they've had, like, Brad Johnson at quarterback uh, even when they were good and, you know, Vinny Testaverde. So, um, but it's still – I wonder remarkable. if he's chasing Jameis. Is Jameis the leader? Uh, he might be. He might be. He was there for – Four or five years, years right? Years. And he yeah. was five, the way around a lot. I mean, Jameis probably leads the – the franchise and interceptions probably right. He would throw no, 33 touchdowns and 30 picks, but um, yeah. And he had a, uh, Jameis had a 5,000 yard passing year too, but Tom mm -hmm. Brady did these things last year and all he needs is 39 touchdown passes to be the all time leader. He needs 4,872 passing yards. Uh, that'll make him number two on the all time list. And uh, I believe he needs 10 wins to be up there as well as the winningest quarterback in uh, in franchise history. So, so real remarkable. quick, uh, so many of the Brady unbelievable records are because of his ridiculous longevity. But this isn't. I mean, this is a short stint. This is just him being awesome. Yeah, he led the NFL in, in pass attempts last year. He had yeah, 700 yeah. pass attempts last year, too. So they're they're leaning on him heavily. This is this is not about longevity, no. Pretty amazing. Yeah. I'm as psyched for this. Game. Go ahead. Yeah, no, as for the game, go ahead, Matt. Yeah, they played last year in week one. And as is the case against the Bucs, very few teams even try to run the ball against these guys. Both these offensive lines have are a little bit reworked. It wasn't their original plan, dealing with some injuries. I think that favors Tampa more than it does the Cowboys, though. I mean, dealing with Vita Vea and those guys, and is, is it going to be Jason Peters, or are they going to kick Smith, the rookie, out there to replace Tyron Smith? 
I don't think either one goes well against Shaq Barrett. I wish they had more weaponry than just Lamb at this moment. And it looks like Gallup will be back sooner than later, but not for this one. I kind of like how you phrased the Julio Jones thing is just get me enough between him and Godwin to make a, you know, a, a full player for a whole year. I think yeah. that'll work out enough. You know, yeah, can, you get, can you get one month out of Julio Jones? Mm -hmm. And then once October hits, then you're Godwin. rolling with Godwin. And, and mm -hmm. I think they would love that if that's the case. And I think that's exactly the plan. And who knows, maybe get uh, both of them together for a few weeks, you know, healthy sure. along with, uh, with with Mike Evans and and then you're really and they have Gage and they're okay you know and Gage it's it's funny because Julio's <laughs> one is healthy right now and Gage is not ready to start the season right right Julio, I like the Bucks here and I'm laying the points we're we're going in the way back machine Sammy Watkins <clears throat> and Julio Jones are are sneaky fantasy wow players. right I, like I bet they're cheap DFS guys I almost said that when you're talking about Watkins like I bet you get him for nothing he might have his one blow up game of the year. Picking up my phone right now. I'm going to open up the Prize Picks app. Oh, which, okay. Uh, I play those two guys as part of my my <laughs> Prize Picks here in in Week One. The cow, uh, no, the uh, the Buccaneers on the road are favored by two and a half points. Can they win this one by a field goal on the road? Man? I think so. I mean, I'm sure that place will be hopping. I mean, it's a huge stadium. All eyes will be on it. Big D. Everything's bigger in Dallas. But I think Brady and company handle that without any problem. I think they're clearly the better team and have less issues at the moment. I'm going to lay the points. Can the pass rush get home, especially up the middle yeah. with, uh, with what's going on with the offensive line and how banged up they are in Tampa, the Dallas Cowboys at home, home dog. I'm going to take the Cowboys in this one. Yeah. All right. Give me the Cowboys. That leaves us with Thursday night football. And you know, we wanted to end with Thursday night football, just in case some of you folks might be listening to this on Friday and you've already known the results of Thursday night sure, sure. football. It is the Buffalo Bills at the Los Angeles Rams, a game that a lot of people, Matt, are calling a Super Bowl preview. Do you see this as a Super Bowl preview this year to kick off the NFL season? Uh, potentially. Uh, I mean, I think that that's not far-fetched at all. Um, that's a Super Bowl favorite versus Super Bowl champion. You know, um, The Bills are favored. I think the Rams win it. I really think the loss of Tredavis White hurts you in a game like this. Um, I'm sure they'll get pressure on Stafford, but I think those weapons are going to be really difficult to handle from the Bills. I mean, the Bills are the heaviest nickel team in the league. The Rams are the heaviest 11 personnel team in the league. So you're going to see the same guys out there time and time again. But three corners, and they're, they're short, they're best guy. Von Miller revenge game, you know, I mean, I think that's fun. And I think both defenses will be really good. Tons of star power galore. I think Donald's going to be a problem, though. You know, I mean, just all eyes on him like the Super Bowl. I expect an A-plus game from Aaron Donald and him chasing Allen around, you know, like crazy. I think they squeak out a tough one in what is an extremely fun game to win, to watch. So I got the Rams to win. Man, Ramsey and Diggs, that's worth the price of admission. Oh, yeah, and I yeah. think the Rams do – sort of match up well against the bills i do too more what the bills do the best um and so uh, and being a home dog here they're coming off a super bowl win uh, always yeah. such a tough environment for the road yeah. guy on thursday night too yeah yep yep so yeah give me the give me the home dogs here with the los angeles rams because the buffalo bills favored by you know two and a half points and certainly the bills could go win this game but uh yeah Give me the Los Angeles Rams, especially against the, the spread. Could be a tight one, yeah. though. It's going to be a fun game. I love how this kicks off. I've got one theory for you, though. Hmm. Allen Robinson, and I love the pickup by the Rams for Allen Robinson. Um, is there is there an Allen Robinson, like, it, it, it is – is there something with Allen Robinson where he makes it so there's bad quarterback play? Like, because as soon as <laughs> he brings some people down. Yeah. As soon as, as soon as the Rams sign Allen Robinson, Matthew Stafford all of a sudden has this arm injury, right? I, I think this arm injury is real. And you're going to hear a lot of Stafford didn't practice this week. He took Wednesday off. He took Thursday off. I think they're just monitoring it. Um, that, that's interesting though. I, I own Robinson in like every fantasy league. I've been taking him around earlier than I should. I think he's up for a really big year. Another sneaky DFS play there. Yeah, and there you go. It's Allen Robinson. We're throwing it back to like 2017 with our DFS picks this week at wide. Okay, Julio, A-Rob and Watkins. <laughs> right. I love it. Fantastic. Can't wait for week one. We'll be back tomorrow and previewing and making picks for the rest of the week one. Slate, enjoy 
the NFL season, folks. Matt and I back tomorrow right here. Peacock and Williams.